Hi friends, it's Nathan, a second year pharmacy student studying at the University of Waterloo, but currently doing a hospital placement in the surgery department. Today I am going to be shadowing a surgical pharmacist. I'm going to be going alongside his date and I'm going to take you guys along with me. So if that's something you're interested in, then keep on watching. We're going to go to general surgery, inpatient unit, and that's B9. General surgery is the broadest of surgical fields, covering the surgical management of diseases from head to toe. This may include head and neck surgeries, to thoracic, to interventions inside the abdomen. Operations can range from removing cancer, to treating traumatic injuries, to restoring function to diseased tissues. That is a very macro perspective of general surgery, and it differs at every hospital. At my hospital, which is one of the largest acute centers in the nation, our specialties are so specific that general surgery is really only focused on the alimentary tract, abdomen and its content, and the pelvis. Some of the conditions that I saw in my patients that required surgery today would be a pseudocyst associated with pancreatitis, and this is caused by alcohol or idiopathic gallstones, free air in the abdomen, which is caused by perforation, cholecystitis, which is an inflammation of the gallbladder, post-operative pelvic complications, diverticulitis, which is an abscess, and lastly, a fistula, an abnormal connection of two organs or two structures in the body. Surgical pharmacists take care of surgical patients, but with a focus on their medications. Pharmacists will collaborate with doctors to diagnose a patient's illness. They'll assess various interventions, what we call drug therapy problems, and lastly, care for patients and their medications before and after surgery. As the surgical pharmacy student, my role is in the clinic where I'm managing their pre-operative medications, what they're taking prior to the surgery, and then the surgical pharmacist would be dealing with what they're taking post-surgery and how they're dealing with recovery. I'm going to give you a little tour of the general surgery ward, so come follow along. So right when you walk in, there is the waiting room. I'm just going to check this out. And this is the view from the ninth floor. Here is the med room. Now in the fridge here, we have some more medications. We have epidurals there. We have PCA syringes. And then Ativan, which is a benzodiazepine. Deb! What's happening to her? She's seizing. Step back, step back. Damn. A few milligrams out of that. Call oh, radiology, we need to get her upstairs for a head CT now. Out of NN. Okay, then. Okay. This little baggie system is really cool. You have your drug here, pantaprazole, which is a PPI. This system actually allows you to reconstitute it without needing any extra supplies and keeping it sterile and easy to use. So this system will allow you to insert the powder into the liquid in one step, in one go, and then you can just put it into IV. And all throughout the war, you'll see these computer cart, so it allows you to access patient charts, patient files, and there's also some PPO and ward stock. Here we have some dextrose bags. Um, here we got needles. These are for catheters. Let's see what else. Oh, these are blood tubes. More tube samples. And this is the equipment room. In here we store our O2 tanks as well as our thermal blankets. So I'm on a little break and I want to tell you about my morning. So we went up to the ward, specifically the general surgery ward, and I was given a tour. I met the teams, the nurses, the dietitian, the physiotherapist, the residents, the doctors. They were doing the rounds. And then I kind of learned how the communication system works. So this is the problem sheet we use. It'll say date, time, and the patient will write their pin or their names and then the issue. And then here we have the physician's signature and response. For example, there was a patient that had higher than normal potassium. And then here we would figure out if we want to initiate treatment to fix that or if we are okay with slightly elevated numbers. And then we went into a room and then he was just teaching me about 
his role and kind of the problems that he encounters going through case studies. I have a whole clipboard full of notes because they were deep. They were definitely tickling my brain. A lot of thinking was required I'm trying to use my clinical and therapeutic knowledge to answer these questions. I am proud, even though if I didn't know an answer, I tried to logically come up with an answer using what I know. So I think he appreciated that as well, that I wasn't ever like backing down from a question. Definitely, I am in my beginning stages of my education because there's so much I need to know and so much I need to learn that I haven't gotten the chance to cover yet. I'm now gonna see one of his patients on my own and I wanna ask her about her antibiotic treatment and how it's going. She is coming in for a bowel obstruction and she has an infection. So we put her on piperacillin and tazobactam and I wanna see how it's going for her, if the antibiotic is working. I'm also gonna look at some lab work before going in so I can get a sense of her white blood cell count and any other indications of infection. And I'm going to just have a conversation with her, see how it's going, and see if I can identify any drug therapy problems. Before I see any patient, I have to garb up. So this is droplet control. I will use hand sanitizer, and I will put on the gown, and then have mask, of course, with the face shield, and then um, take a glove. Hi guys, I hope you're enjoying the day in the life. I wanted to pop in and tell you this video is kindly sponsored by Later, the number one visual marketing platform. Social media has given me so many opportunities and I thank you guys all the time because I'm so grateful for how you guys have changed my life. Later helps streamline your social media strategy so that you too can reap the success and sales of a social media platform, of an online business, whatever you're passionate about. Later's goal is to simplify influencer marketing so that anyone, whether you have 100 followers, whether you have a 1,000 or 10,000, 100,000, you can build up your brand. A question that I constantly get is how I manage social media with working at the hospital, with school, and later has really been a huge game changer, especially in regards to Instagram. I'm gonna take you onto my dashboard and show you how I plan all my content, how I schedule my posts, because if you guys didn't know, I sleep very early and a lot of the times, when my posts go up already in bed about to sleep. So later allows me to do all that stress-free. I'm going to start by importing a photo into the media library. This is me on a boat. Looks pretty good. You should definitely follow me on Instagram at Nathan.Wu. Then I'm going to go to the calendar. The pink boxes you see are my best times to post calculated by Later's analytics. I'm doing eight because I sleep at eight. So I'm putting in my caption, you can add emojis, and a really neat feature is the hashtag suggestion. So I'm putting in the words that I want my photo to show up in the explore page. I'm gonna add a comment for engagement because everyone loves Avatar The Last Airbender, who doesn't? And then I am going to add a location, I'm from Toronto, and auto post it so when the time comes, it'll go up. I can also look at my analytics, which is very important to me, how I can see my content is doing, what you guys are loving. I have been loving Later's growth plan. It has really been able to level up my social media strategy, my brand, my content creation. If you are interested in doing the same, check out Later's blog for helpful tips. I will link it in the description box below. Thank you, Later, and let's continue on with the video. The second half of the day, and I spent the early afternoon just learning more about his role, what his field of scope is, what he does. And then now I'm about to see a patient. Now he gave me a crash course on how to do a patient workup. Now I've never done a workup, I'm only my second year and that's usually covered in the third and fourth years. So he basically told me how to do the whole process. So we looked through her charts and then we noticed that there was a drug interaction. Now this patient is taking carbamazepine, which is for seizures, and also taking tramadol, which is an opioid painkiller. Those two medications have an interaction because the tramadol can actually lower seizure threshold. And then this is obviously a concern, so I'm going to go have a conversation with her, a consult. I'm just so excited because this is like my first time doing a workup and really giving a pharmaceutical recommendation on my own. It's gonna be a really good experience and um, I will update you after I see the patient.
Okay guys, what just happened in the past hour really reminds me of why I went into pharmacy and what I love so much about this field. So I go into the room and I actually like have my notes here. I go into a room and I consult with her and I tell her my concerns with tramadol and how it can cause an interaction. Now I do a pain assessment scale because tramadol is a pain reliever. I wanna see if it's even warranted. So I'm asking questions. I ask her to do the pain scale. So from a scale of one to 10, how bad is your pain? She tells me it's an eight. Now, eight is quite high, especially for what she should be experiencing. So that gives me a warning. And I find out that she had to use hydromorphone shots for breakthrough pain. At first, I was just gonna discontinue the tramadol and then leave it at that and maybe recommend her something like Voltaren or heat therapy, mobility therapy. But clearly at a pain scale of eight, that would not be tolerable. So we need to figure out a pharmacologic strategy. So after this, I spoke with a resident on the team and we were having a discussion with her and her attending and we were just discussing about our options. We decided on hydromorphone oral. Now, again, she was getting it subcutaneously. So there is a dosing conversion that needs to be done. It is four to one. If she was getting one milligram of hydromorphone injected, she would need to get four milligrams oral to get the same therapeutic effect. That was like a learning moment for me because I didn't know that there was like a conversion scale. So that was really cool. And just being able to collaborate that interprofessional collaboration with the residents and even talking a bit with the nurses and the attending, it was a really good experience. It's just so unique to hospital practice. There's so much interprofessional collaboration and it's just fantastic. Then I was able to provide some counseling, some patient education on pain management strategies. So the Voltaren, which she's used in the past and has worked fantastic for her. Mobility therapy. So getting up, walking, especially when they're in a bed, a hospital bed for so long, of course they can get some body pain. Lastly, heat therapy. So using a heat pad. Don't ever doubt the effectiveness of non-pharmacologic therapies. Very end of it, I documented it, did a little soap note. That was like my first soap note documentation. So that was uh, really, really exciting. And so just had a lot of firsts and day on general surgery was fantastic. I learned so much. Like I said, I have literally six pages of notes here. I was just jotting down everything that was new to me, everything about the role and the service and it was just such a such a good and informative day. The pharmacist that took me on was so trusting of me and gave me so much professional freedom and allowed me to see this patient on my own despite never having done this before. It just shows that he does trust me and I could see that when I was answering questions and even if I didn't know the answer, he could see me working through it and he was really proud that I was working through it rather than just you know, saying, I don't know it, let me try to figure it out. He was a fantastic mentor, which I am so appreciative of. If you enjoyed this day in the life of a general surgery pharmacist, please give it a like. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next. If you have any questions about general surgery and specifically the pharmacist's role on the team here, let me know in the comments. And if you want to see more hospital vlogs, study vlogs, study advice, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified every time I post a new video. And if you want more day-to-day -day content, follow me on Instagram at Nathan.Wu. And for comedy and relatable content about being a student or in healthcare, make sure to follow me on TikTok at It's Nathan Wu. But that's it for me, and I'll see you friends in the next video. Bye.